few, but we're good in numbers for us to serve the Lord. I, can we say that one more time? Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I hope everyone had a wonderful week. I know I had. How many of us are here grateful for the sun for today, for the warm weather this past week? I know it's been a little cold, but we are so blessed to be in the house of God where it's nice and warm in the fellowship of all of our brothers and sisters today. Um, as you notice, or as you may not be aware, today is Global Youth Day. So throughout this whole program, throughout this whole Divine Hour and Sabbath School, you'll see some of the youth being in, taking charge of this day. And for the most part, we can start uh, with an opening prayer. If I can ask for those who are able to stand, if you can join me as we open up with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our most kind, loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, Father, for being with us, protecting us, and keeping us safe throughout this week. Lord, now that we are about to open the Sabbath school, Lord, I ask that we can learn more about you in our small groups and have a better understanding of what you want us to know about you, Lord God. I ask that whatever we learn today, let us be, take it with us and apply it into our li daily lives. We ask this in your most holy and precious name. Amen. And now at this time, I would like to ask the praise team to come and uh, sing us our first opening song. If I can ask for those who are still to remain standing to sing our opening song, Come Thou Fount. to ask if we can have Reese Daisley to come forward to offer us our scripture reading.
Good afternoon. Uh, uh. Uh. Happy Sabbath. Uh, uh, today's reading is from Psalm chapter 84, verse 2. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Thank you, Reese, for giving us the scripture reading. And now at this moment, we will like to break up into our small groups to do our individual Sabbath school lessons. Thank you. So good morning, happy Sabbath. Thank happy you, Elder Sabbath. Virgilio, for joining us once again in our Sabbath school lesson. Um, we want to thank all our viewers that are watching online, and we also want to welcome you uh, to our Sabbath school uh, once again. We are grateful that um, we're able to do this uh, online. Uh, we know we have a lot of viewers. Our viewers are actually growing in number. Uh, I understand we have over 900 subscribers, uh, which I believe is totally awesome. Uh, I know that some of them are not in this country. Some of them are coming from afar and watching from afar. And so uh, we're just so grateful. We want to thank all our our viewers and all our subscribers. Um, it's always good to uh, be in the house of the Lord, but if you can't be in the house of the Lord, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord in spirit, right? Amen, amen. <laughs> and so we thank you for joining us. We hope that you will truly uh, be blessed. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we are so grateful once again for your love and for your kindness, for your goodness, for all the blessings that you pour upon each and every one of us, for all the promises that we have, because the Bible says actually that every single promise that we have are amen, amen in Christ Jesus. And so we're so grateful for that. Uh, we ask, Lord God, that as we open up the scriptures, that you may open up our hearts. Uh, and Lord God, as you open up our hearts, that we may be uh, receptive uh, to be a, uh, to your Holy Spirit and that we can obey uh, every command. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen and amen. 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 So we are continuing our study in the book of Psalms. Um, and this week's uh, Bible study, the uh, rather Sabbath school lesson is entitled uh, Longing for God in Zion. It is lesson number 11, so we will have two more lessons um, and we will have a nice celebration on 13th Sabbath, which we will not only be closing our Sabbath school lesson, uh, but we will also be closing um, our uh our theme for the quarter, which is uh, the book, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, rather, <clears throat> and we will be starting a new one. But nonetheless, our lesson outline is lesson outline number 11 for those who are following, uh, and it is longing for God in Zion. And so, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, has to do with a relationship is when you uh, you long for something or you long for someone, right? Mm. And so, uh, you know, I know that when my kids, uh, when they went away to college, uh, when they were away and uh, on vacation or whatever, I would, I would long 
for them. I would long mm -hmm. to see them. I wanted to spend time with them. I wanted to be with them. Um, and I actually have uh, two children that are not living in the state. <laughs> one lives in, in Georgia and the other one lives in California. And so uh, when I have the opportunity to see them, um, I get very excited because uh, the fact is is that when they're away, even though they're adults, I long for them. I long Amen. to spend Amen. time with them. And that's kind of our relationship uh, with God, right? Uh, we want to look at some of the Psalms that talk about a longing, uh, this type of longing, this type of uh, relationship or this type of devotion uh, that comes deep uh, from within. And the very first psalm that we're going to look at is Psalm 84, uh, verses uh, 1 through 4. Uh, Elder Virgilio, if you can uh, read verses 1 through 4 in Psalm 84. And the psalm reads, um, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth, for the courts of the Lord, my heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow has found an house and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Mm. Amen. And so let's let's continue because I want to continue with verses 5 through 9. And then I'm going to ask Elder Virgilio to finish up with 10 through 12. And it says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on a pilgrimage as they pass through the valley of Baca. They make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God. In Zion, O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. And 10 to 12 reads, For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Amen. 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 So we want to welcome Sister Carol with us. Thank you, Sister Carol, for uh, deciding to be with us. Um, thank you very much. Good morning. morning. Happy Sabbath. Uh, we were just reading through Psalm 84. We read uh, through the entire psalm. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an interesting psalm because uh, we're talking about the longing of a devoted heart. And, uh, you know, we see that when you go to the house of the Lord, when you have a relationship uh, with the King, with God, uh, blessings come with it. Amen. Right? Yes. And, 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 Maybe you could tell me, Elder Virgilio, and then keep this in your mind also, Sister Carol. Um, you know, what do you think about this psalm? Like, what, what is it that the psalmist who, who wrote this song uh, is, is, is experiencing? Like, can, can you tell me a little bit about yeah. the experience of this so, particular person? So I person? think what, what uh, again, this is the son of Korah, right? And so what he's really trying to portray is that he wants that intimacy with God. He longs to be with God. Mm. And he would, like in verse 10, it reads, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Amen. So it's so powerful to see that he wants to be close. He wants to be near. He wants to be in the presence of the Lord, regardless of everything was happening. And so he details it to the point that he'd rather be with God than anywhere else. Or anywhere else, even with the wickedness that's in the world, so that's just kind of symbolic of how we are, right? We'd yeah, rather yeah. be with God, but we're in this world of wickedness. Yeah. So we always have to look up to Him because later on we'll read is that we are not to fear, we are not to be anxious in the other Psalms. Amen. So when, when, when you look at that verse, at least when I look at that verse, I see that, you know, this is probably a servant being a doorkeeper, 
right, is, is the job of the servant. Um, not only did the doorkeeper open a door for you, accept you in, but, uh, you know, there was a lot of dusty roads in Jerusalem, right? And they had open sandals. They didn't have, uh, you know, clothes, shoes the way we have today. They didn't have socks. They didn't have any of those things. At least I don't believe they did. And, of course, you know, they would have some water uh, in the front and they'd wash the feet of the people coming in. And so this person is saying, man, I don't care if I have the most menial of jobs. I don't care if I am the servant, if I am the doorkeeper. You know what? Spending a day in the house of the Lord is more, is, is, is better for me than a thousand uh, days outside of your court. I'm, that is an amazing way to, to that, that, that is an amazing praise and, and an amazing experience that this person had in the house of the Lord. What do you think, Carol? I think it's beautiful because the person has such a close relationship with God and learned to have to see the value of God. Mm -hmm. How important is God to his life to the point where he humbles himself. It doesn't matter what position. It's not like other people I want to be this, like the other ones that would tell mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, I, I would like to be at the right side of your hand. I would like to be this. He didn't mind. He didn't care being whatever as long as it gets to be there to live with God. And I wish that's the same thing I said. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. If I'm the last one that enters through the door, <laughs> yeah. as long as scrolling through the door, the last one. <laughs> but to be able to live with God, because it's just like what that life would be like. And to see that God is such an awesome God. And we have such a beautiful experience with Him. And we don't have Him face to face. And I could imagine what it's going to be like that day when we have Him face to face. What a wonderful experience. What a yeah. wonderful experience. And I pray that each one of us will reach to not only have that desire, but it also will be fulfilled to experience yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Well, I, I just want to let you know that the Bible does say that the first shall be last and the last That's shall be first. first. I don't care whichever <laughs> one. I just need to be there. <laughs> As long as I'm there. Yes. Amen, <laughs> amen. So we want to continue looking and we want to read. This is a psalm of David. And so we want to go to Psalm 63. Sister Carol, if you can read Psalm 63 verses 1 through 4. And then I'll have uh, Elder Virgilio read 6 uh, through 1 8. through 4. Yes, 63, 1 through 4. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Hmm. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Mm, mm, Beautiful. Amen. Elder Virgilio. Amen. And so I'll continue reading um, from 6 to through 8. eight. And it reads, When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on, the th on thee in the, night, in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that swearest by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Amen. 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 And so um, what we want to look at is, you know, it, we're going to talk in the ahead of this we're going to speak about what it meant to going into the house of the lord but the experience that the psalmist that for example this was king david who wrote this the experience that he is experiencing was this something that was being experienced in the house of the lord or was this something that was experienced outside like when you read this psalm yeah so where, that, where, where uh, what is the setting where is he yeah no no so it looks like when we're talking of, of, of David, he was kind of, you know, being chased and being, you know, had him in turmoil, and he's looking for God. He's, yeah. he's actually seeking for God. He said, hey, you know, dear Lord, give me help. Give me, and, and so he's uh, equating it where there is nothing, no water, no nothing, says you provide all that to me. And he's begging and asking him and pleading him, please provide. 
Right, right, right. And so um, I, I believe it was, uh, where exactly is it? Um, verse 6, for example, when I remember you on my bed. Amen. So right here he is meditating. It says here, I meditate on you in the night watches. We know that there are different night watches. We can have from 9 uh, from, from 6 to 9, uh, if sunset's at 6 o'clock, from 6 to 9, from 9 to 12, from 12 to 3, from 3 to 6 in the morning, right? And so here it says that he meditates on God throughout the entire night because it says night watches, right? And so his, his mind and his heart is constantly meditating and longing for a deep relationship with God. One that is so deep that as the deer, right, pants for water and wants that and is thirsting, right, that's exactly how he is searching and looking uh, and wanting to experience uh, the, uh, the Lord and have that deep relationship uh, with him. Did you want to add to yes, that? I was looking on one of the um, comments on um, Free ABN, and this woman was giving the example when it said the deer panted. And she looked what that meant, and it was so impressive to me because she said when the deer had this little baby and not yeah. able to go to the water, they would make a special sound because they need that water. Mm. And, you know, like, like thirst and that sound. And I said, how much if it reached that point when it said panted, to reach that point that your body is, is, is involving not only emotional, but the physical yes. reaction. Just like when we're thirsty, when we are hungry, when we have a physical need, that it, it, nothing else is important that to meet that need. Mm -hmm. And how beautiful it reached that point where God is everything that, you, just like how you thirst for water, just like how you crave for food, just like how you, you, you're dying to sleep. When it reached a point where you're physically, physically, has that desire, that need. It, 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 it takes a lot to get to that point. Emotionally, you can get there, but to transform it in a physical need, it takes more than just now and then worshiping it. Mm. Just like how um, Elderwood says, the more, because when he said he, he went through all the watch hours, just the whole night. He didn't, sometimes he doesn't sleep. Yeah, he is constantly on watch. Uh, and again, he was, we, the setting is, is that he's being chased. Chase, yeah. And yeah. He's, be, he's running from King Saul specifically and, 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 and his army. And so he needs to kind of be awake. <laughs> he needs to kind of be on watch, right? right Watching, yeah. make sure that uh, because they're seeking his life, that they don't kill him. But the point is, is that, uh, and it's well taken, that he is watching in every moment moment of the night where he is thinking and meditating on God's goodness. He could be thinking about, you know, these guys are going to kill, kill me. me. How I'm going to get rid of them. <laughs> right. But, but that's not what he's thinking about. He's thinking about God, God's goodness and how he longs to be in the courts of the Lord. And that groaning is the same exact groaning that this deer pants. It groans for water. It's, it's a mm type of thing, right? Like, oh, I want some water. I want, I'm thirsty. I'm, I'm hungry. That's the same exact thing that Paul speaks about in the book of Romans. And it's yes, very intense. Yes. That it's we groan for, for the Lord. We groan. We are seeking for Him. In fact, all of creation, it says, groans for the Lord. We want to continue moving well, ahead. Let me, let me uh, really quickly interject because in, in, in verse 7 there, it says, because thou has been my help. Mm. So it shows that He's been helping Him all along. And it mm. continues, therefore, in the shadows of thy wings, will I rejoice. Amen. So he is a protector. Yes. And so it reminds me of the little ducklings that come along and the mother duck and she covers them up and protects them like we had in the previous day. That is what God is doing for us. He wants to round us up. He wants to gather us. He wants to protect us and he will be there to protect us. And knowing what he did before, you know the promise that he will do it again and again in the future. What assurance. So assurance. when you think about your own life, and now I will ask the both of you, when you think about your own life, is there someone that has modeled uh, this uh, intimate, earnest longing for God in their life? Is there someone that you can look to that you've seen in your life that literally longs uh, for God as a deer pants for water? Um, have you seen that in the life of someone that could have been an inspiration to you? 
My mom. Your mom. <laughs> my mom that passed away every time. When I'm, I'm about to make a decision, even when I'm going to do something that is wrong, I could mm. hear her in the background. Mm. <laughs> I could hear it and I can remember all the encouragement and how she would say, if you're, not, if you're not faithful in the little things, you will not be faithful on that day. Mm. And mm. it would have me retrieve no matter what would be the consequences. I always remember when, when it comes to my job, because I'm in the medical field and I have to make a decision and it's going to involve my principles. I remember my mom and my elder sister with all of us. Those are my two. Would always tell me, we can't decide and tell you not to do it. But remember, if you can't stand in this mild trial, you won't be able to stand in the bigger trial. Mm. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and it typically is going to be the mothers. And so mine's is the same. Like my mom was kind of the, the one that kind of spearheaded the house uh, religiously. She, she would go and she would look and she would seek for people that not only was in need of physical but spiritual help and you can always see it in her and right now she you know my mom is in 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 in, in carolina and she's always going out she's always going to do bible studies she's always going out there to help not because she 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 needs so but she her love in in her heart for the lord is there and she'll Tell me stories of people that just come up to her and says, you know, start talking. And they will have Bible study at McDonald's. They'll have Bible study at Wendy's. And so when, when I look at the question, I said, I, I have to say my mom because she's, she's, you know, she's an example because she continues to long. And when she talks to me, she, she'll tell me Bible verses. Oh, do you know, remember this? You know, we should really look at this and, and, and try and put it in our lives. So it's always an example of, of what the moms are, are like. And I think. For most of us, is usually our moms yeah. that uh, yeah. kind of. You know, I'm I, I'm going to break the uh, the model here. Okay. <laughs> but in reality, the person that has uh, imi uh, imitated that particular longing for mm. God in my life, I have two people. One of them is Pastor Thorpe. Uh, mm. pa 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 Pastor Thorpe has been interested in the spiritual formation in my life mm. and not mm. just me but also uh, Christ being formed in me and in my wife and in my children in my household um, he's been very very um, integral uh, in in that aspect in our lives you know I I constantly remember many of the sermons that that he preached and a lot of the the sayings that he would have um, they constantly pop up in my life um, whenever uh, I find myself in some type of need or, or in some type of w where I need to encourage someone, I constantly draw back uh, from the things that, that, that he said and he taught. And any other person in my life, and this person is a great friend of mine, um, and he's been very, very, uh, he's an intimate friend, he's a great friend. You know, I, I, I remember him, we both became Christians about the same time, or rather we both came into the church uh, around the same time, and I remember we had similar backgrounds, um, and uh, yeah, um, just the way that he would express himself in his relationship with God, um, the simplest of sermons and the simplest of phrases and the simplest of verses, he would just expand on them uh, and make them so, you know, alive, and, and I would say, wow, I want that type of relationship mm. with the Lord. You Amen. know, what he has is what I want. And yeah, that's been very, very important to me. By the way, his name is Nelson. Great friend of mine. <laughs> Nelson, if you're listening, I love you, brother. <laughs> so yeah, we want to continue. Um, and um, so we want to continue. Let's go to, to, to uh, section number two where it says, going into the house of the Lord. And Elder Virgilio, if you can read Psalm 122, <clears throat> Psalm 122 verses 1 uh, through 9. And we want to look at, you know, what was the experience um, of these worshipers and why were they experience, experiencing such joy when they when they got together uh, mm -hmm. in the house of the Lord. Ascending Mount Zion, yes, yes, yes. And it reads, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a building as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, 
the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and thy prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Amen. Amen. So, Sister uh, Carol, as you, as 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 Elder Virgilio read this, um, what emotions do you think that they were experiencing? That the, the emotion for me that they were experiencing is that I feel like they never. They were longing to have a place to worship God because, you know, they had to be moving and for so long they didn't have a practical place where. And finally, like you said, there is where they could meet a, a, a main place where God would always be there. And to know that every day we would go up to that particular place to meet with him is beautiful. Mm. It's so beautiful. It's just like when we select a section in our house to be like a prayer room, a prayer section. You know, you go specifically there to meet God with no interruption with nothing, just that one-on-one -on -one re um, relationship where you know you could pour out your, out at your heart and receive all of that what God has for you, a peace of mind, that joy to be able to praise Him. Amen. You said a very, very important word there. So, so going into the presence of the Lord fills your heart with joy. Amen. But not only does it fill your heart with joy, it also gives you peace, right? And so when you have peace, you have assurance, mm -hmm. right? Amen. So you know that the Lord is your strength. You know that the Lord is your rock. You know that the Lord is your refuge. You know that the Lord is your redeemer. There's no if and wiser but about it. He is your protector. He is the one who is going to guide you. He is the one who is going to lead you, to uphold you. And it doesn't matter. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Isn't that amazing? And when you're in his presence, you feel that. You understand that. You know that. And so, you know, whenever you feel fear or anything like that, you're, you're like, well, wait, I want to be in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> and so you long to be with him. And it, let me ask you a quick question. This, this is a quick question that I want to ask because I'm trying to move ahead because I see I'm looking at the time. <laughs> um, and so the question is, um, you know what? We'll ask that question in a little bit. Let's, okay. let's continue because <laughs> okay. I think I'm jumping ahead of myself here. Uh, <laughs> okay. But okay. let's take a look at, for example, Exodus 25, 8. Sister Carol, if you can read Exodus 25, 8. Exodus 25, mm. 8. And we want to look at what the house of the Lord represents uh, mm. for the children of Israel. Exodus 25, 8. Yes, and it says, And uh, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Mm. 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 And, uh, beautiful. Okay, so so the thing that's going on here is they are in the wilderness, right? And they had left Egypt. They were slaves. Of course, they did have food to eat. They had they had clothes to cover them, and they had a place to sleep that covered them. Right? They weren't living in tents. They weren't, uh, you know, running from the enemy. They weren't in the wilderness where things were, you know, could get hot. It could get cold. Snakes came, all kinds of things happened, <laughs> right? Infected. Right, and so they're in the wilderness, and God says, has this longing to dwell with them, to spend some time with them, to be with them, right? And he says, make me a sanctuary mm. that I may dwell Isn't that beautiful? amongst you. Mm. That's the setting. Mm. They're in a wilderness. Mm. What does that mean to you, Elder Virgilio? It's incredible because it shows you the love that he has for you because... Yeah. They're in the wilderness. They're going through. And he says, no, you want to be with me? But no, I want to be with you. Mm. And so a lot of people may think of it that you're supposed to go to him. But he is more enjoyed. He's more endeavored to be, yeah. go and be with you. Yeah, and yeah. so he says, please make this sanctuary so I can be with you. And they can see the glory of God yeah. within the tabernacle. Right, right. And so God is longing 
to spend time with us. And he's saying, make me a dwelling place. Mm. Make me a sanctuary. Mm. And so when it says in, 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 in the New Testament, when, when Jesus came, right, and he made his dwelling, he dwelt among us. What, they, what he's saying is, I tabernacled mm. with them, right? So the God that they were worshiping came down. And he tabernacled. He dwelt among them. He lived with them. He said, listen, I'm, I, before I showed myself and, and, and presented myself in the fire. I presented mm -hmm. myself in the cloud of, of, of smoke. But now I'm going to actually come in person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to tabernacle with you. What do you think about that? What I think <laughs> is, is so beautiful because if you see wilderness... It means that wherever you are, whatever chaotic situation you're going through, you are in a hospital bed. Mm. You're within you. Create the tabernacle, your atmosphere. Um, it, it wants to dwell with you no matter what you're going through. You could be in your bed in your last hours. You could be wherever circumstances you're going through. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a physical building. In this case, it was a physical building because they were tired of just not going back to place and don't have a place to go. But this represents anywhere you are. Mm. Create the atmosphere where tabernacle. If you're in a hospital, of course, you can get up and go to a, a sanctuary because every hospital, most of them would have a, a sanctuary for you to go to worship. But right in your atmosphere, he wants to be with you no matter where you are what you're going through he wants to be with you in the midst of your chaos in the midst of everything to dwell to let you know that you're not in this alone mm. i am with you wherever you go through they were in the wilderness and he was performing all those miracles but he said create a place a place that even wherever you keep going you can come to me and i'm be right there with you you could feel me you could sense me otherwise and all the miracles that I do, you could come and sense me. And this is what God is inviting us. That no matter what, for you that watching online, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are at work, whatever distress, if you have to leave the room and go into the bathroom and create that moment to pray and bring his presence, because he's inviting you. Wherever you are, whatever you need, he wants to be with you. You don't have to leave your premises to be with him. Wherever, in your car, invite him. Wherever a, you are, a, invite a, him. Amen. That leads me to the next question because uh, uh, this particular sanctuary that was built was built in the wilderness. And of course, David and the sons of Korah and many others, Solomon, they wrote about a temple and they worshiped actually mm -hmm. inside of a temple that was built by hands, right? Uh, 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 not something that was a tent inside the wilderness, which I'm sure was a tremendous experience also because God manifested himself, mm -hmm. as I said, in the fire, the Shekinah glory. Uh, God manifested himself also in the cloud and, uh, 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 by day. And so my point is, is that where do we seek the Lord? Do we have to come to church to be in his presence? Like, what is this about? Is, is it yeah. only here that God manifests himself? Yeah, no, no. Obviously, so the, it's not just a church. <laughs> and, and even if you're in a church, it doesn't necessarily mean that God is here. Oh. Right. So we need to be careful when we say physical. Like if it's physical, it can be. It's what your heart is and what the, 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 the body of the, of the living God is there with you. But no, not also is it the physical, but it's also the spiritual. So God was going to be with you regardless, you know. It doesn't have to be physical. As long as you're walking in the way of the Lord, He's going to have the Holy Spirit in you. And so there's a sanctuary in heaven, but there's a sanctuary in your heart too, that when you have the Lord with you, He's going to be there. So it's regardless of <laughs> the physicality or, or the physical location. And, and I wanted to just bring back what, what Sister Carol said, is that seeing all the miracles that the children of Israel were having, we should be able to, you know, reflect on that and say, hey, that could be all of us. That could be us. We don't need to have, you know, the tabernacle. We can be ourselves, the ones that receive the Holy Spirit and be that tabernacle within us. Mm. And so as I think about the things that you guys are saying and what we've read so far, um, I think about a song. Uh, I remember li first listening to it in Spanish because when I first came to the Lord, 
or when the Lord found me, because I, I didn't find him, he found me, he, he sought after me. <laughs> and so when the Lord first found me, um, I remember listening to this song in Spanish, and it was called Dios Transformame en Santuario, Lord, make me a sanctuary. And so I see what you're saying, I see what you're saying, I see what the scriptures are saying, right? What Paul says and Peter says that we are a temple. Yeah, our body is a our temple. Our body is mm -hmm. a temple, and 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 the Lord dwells. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, it says, dwells mm -hmm. inside of us. And so, the, we have this, if you want to say, the compartments of the sanctuary where it had the sacrificial, uh, the things that were sacrificed. It had the courts. It had it had all these uh, vessels where, where where God manifested Himself. God can manifest Himself through your eyes. God can manifest himself through your mouth. God can manifest himself through your ears. He can manifest himself through your hands. He can manifest himself and have a wonderful seat and abode and a dwelling place in your heart, in your mind. And so I'm like, yo, this is absolutely amazing. <laughs> and it, what can you tell me about that? Like, do you experience that? Well, what, what I know for sure that is the Bible says that our body is the temple of God, right? So God, we say the temple could be physical or, you know, physically or materialistic, right? And I experience God in every aspect because when I go to places like with clients that, you know, um, at some point were suicidal, and God used me as a vessel. They probably didn't recognize anything, but at that moment, I became a temple for them because the Holy Spirit used me to show them and guide them that this is not the end, that there is a God. Mm -hmm. And we have to always remember that where there is two or three, that's where the presence of God, and that we are His temple. So Amen. we have to always be pure and ready to be used. Wherever we go, we're presenting God because God dwell in us this holy spirit dwells in us a a amen. amen we want to move forward um so jerusalem mount zion was where where you know the 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 temple was built uh, was a very significant special location um for for not only the jewish people for the israelites but it's also a very significant and important place uh, for us, right? The Bible history shows us uh, how significant and important it is. And so uh, we want to look at Psalm 87, verse uh, 1 through 3, Elder Virgilio, and then I'm going to ask Sister Carol to read 48, 1 through 3. So we want to look at Psalm 87, 1 through 3, and then 48, 1 through 3. And Psalm 87, 1 through 3 reads, His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. Mm. In Psalms 48, 1 through 3 says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain. Beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth mm. is Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of the great king. God is in her palaces. He is known as her refuge. Amen. Amen. And so Amen. As, as, as you guys read this verse, there were some things that stood out to me. And so uh, I see that the Jerusalem, right, it, first of all, was on a mountain, right? And Jerusalem is on a mountain. It sits on, on a hill. Uh, but he says that it is uh, uh, the place where God loves to dwell. God loves to dwell in this particular place. God made the Israelites his people. He loved them. And we saw last week he didn't make them his people because, you know, uh, because yeah. they were the greatest amongst all the people, that they were great in number, that they were strong, that they were smart, that they were holy, that they were spiritual. No. <laughs> he made them his people because he loved them, because he promised that he would do that. And we're going to look at that promise in a few minutes, we're actually going to look at that promise. But verses uh, 1 through 3 in Psalm 48 also says that it is the city where God manifested himself. It was the city where God uh, showed himself and did great and mighty things, things and blessed Israel. But Israel was to be a blessing to the nations. Yeah. 
God blessed Abraham, and that's what we're going to look at, Genesis chapter 2, so keep that in your mind. God blessed Abraham, but he didn't bless Abraham for Abraham to keep those blessings to himself. Mm -hmm. He blessed Abraham so that Abraham, in turn, can be a blessing to, to everyone else, to the yeah. entire world. And so if you look at the light, if you put a light on top of a hill or on top of the uh, a table, this is, this is the hill right here, the table, the light is going to Shine. right fill the room with with its light right and so you don't put it under the table like jesus says and so jesus because he blessed mount zion he blessed israel he put that light right on top of the hill he put jerusalem it's a place that he blessed it's a place where he manifested himself and we want to talk a little bit about abraham because this is very very important and this is i think uh, probably the heart of, 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 of the lesson. And we see in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 8 and 9 through 14, we see this interesting story of, of, of what occurred there. Sister Carol, can you kind of tell me more or less, without reading it, the story, we know that um, God promised Abraham a, a son, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and then after he promises this son, you know, and this son comes... <laughs> Well, yeah, well, that. well into his his life, <laughs> well into the, the 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 childbearing years of of, of Sarah, Sarah. Uh, and even God said, you know what? This is not going to come from you, Abraham. This is not going to come from any work that you do. I'm going to make it even more difficult. That look what I'm going to do. I am going to snip the foreskin. <laughs> And you're still going to have desire for your wife. <laughs> and you're still going to have a child. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> too, too amazing. <laughs> it, God, beats, it beats science. <laughs> yeah, God, God is saying, you know what? Just so that everyone can know that this has nothing to do with the work of man and everything to do with God, God. I'm going to make it even a little more difficult for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so what can you tell me about that story? The, the, the amazing part is that, could you imagine that in his old age, you know, he was promised this child and... And, and to the end, is so God said to test them. God said to present his only son, the desired son, as a sacrifice. Mm. And the funny thing is, like, the most interesting thing is when the son, they keep going through everything, the son just like, where is, where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? Yeah. And he's, he still had that faith. He didn't even say, well, God said it's you. God, he said, God will provide. God will God provide. Would pro what a deep faith. Because he already knew from the beginning God said that was going to be his sacrifice. The son was to be sacrificed. But he had such a faith and such a relationship with God that he knows that God is not going to give him something and take it away. And God is not like that. He knows that he, he, he trusted God that despite of what it is when he get to that point, he know that even if God uh, take him, it would bring, God would do something marvelous. Mm. And he trusted him. How many of us? He didn't tell his wife. Because like me, just like you know, no, you're not going nowhere. Just like I've been running away with my son. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. you're not. Hold him down. You know. You just it's promised beautiful. him to me. And it you took 20 years for you just to like, give him to me. And now you want to take him like, away? This old man is getting mad. It's <laughs> yeah. How, what are you going to do that? Right, right. And it's beautiful to see how God, because of obedience, obedience and to trust. Two strong words. Trusting and obedience. Till mm -hmm. the end. It's faith that allows you to obey, uh, to obey God. And so, uh, Elder Virgilio, the question would be, if there, is there a particular verse that helped you to see the faith of Abraham? Is yeah. there a particular yeah. verse in his story? Yeah, no. And I, and I think when he, there was one that was in particular, and, and Sister Carol brought it up, was that, you know, they're going through, and, and, and at some point, He's he's at the base of the, the the mountain, and and I think Mount Moriah is not very tall. Like I think it's maybe 2,500 feet uh, in, in elevation. Um, but he goes and he and he tells the 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 young men that were coming with him, and he tells them, uh, stay here. stay here with the donkeys. You know, uh, the Verse lad five. and I will will go yonder and worship. And we will come back to you. What a faith. Yeah. We will come back. <laughs> we will come back. We will so, come back. So it was no doubt in his mind. And, and I think even in, in, in other chapters of, of the Hebrews, I think, it says that he was even thinking that God would resurrect yeah, yeah. Isaac. He would say, I know I, I have faith in God so much that regardless of what, what was going to happen, even if, it, if he does do it, that God is going to be 
the one that keeps his covenant with me and he will have that son regardless if he raises him from the dead or unknowing to him that it would the angels would stop him but that is like you know don't worry we'll be back you know <laughs> like so that terminator is, and that we'll is because be <laughs> excuse me and that is because of the experience that personal mm. deep experience he never a forgot what amen. god did amen it never forgot and fears i heard someone said when i try you come into a trial and you have fear is because you have forgotten what god has done for you in the past yeah. he never forgot because he believed mm. The promise. promise. He believed what God had said, and he trusted in God. And when you believe and trust in God, that will cause you to live a life of faith, a life of obedience. Uh, because no it is in obedience that comes a faith that mm. is motivated mm. by love. And this is the experience that Abraham had. And when I look at this story, and I know we're coming to a close, when I look at the story, I see... I see the picture of God and Jesus, mm. of God the Father Amen. and Jesus. I see a God who is sacrificing his son, right? I see a son who says, I will go and I will, you know, pro I will be the provision for your people because I want, he wants to save us. And so I see this wonderful picture of a loving God <clears throat> and a loving son who are both working together to save humanity because they love us because they are the ones that are providing for us and i see what a wonderful picture i mean if it, it, it the fact is is that abraham was a, a frail old man he was not a strong you know he may have had some strength but he was not uh, a, a a strong vibrant person you know you had his son who was a young man already this was not a nine-year-old boy this was yeah. not a five-year-old boy most 15. most theologians will tell you and historians will tell you that he was anywhere between 17. 18 uh, to, to, to 20 something years old you know that was the, and that's you know that's a someone who is in their full strength mm -hmm. and he could have said dad you're crazy i'm taking this off and you know i'm gonna sacrifice you right isaac had faith too. yeah absolutely, absolutely. Right. not absolutely. only did he have faith in the lord he, he had he absolutely he had yeah. he had obedience and so um you know there's this wonderful verse we want to read this uh, uh, as 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 we leave um because we see uh, and there was so much we needed to go through yeah. but unfortunately time is up but we see in revelation 21 1 through 4 and revelation 22 uh, 27 that god will dwell with us he will tabernacle with oh. us once again but this time it's not to Forever. save us from sin this time is right forever Jerusalem. right we will Ever. be with him and we will uh he will dwell with us and he will be our god and he will be everything, everything. for us right oh we will see god. him as mm. as as he is we won't have to put a uh, he won't have to put anything over his face so mm -hmm. we will not faint and die because of his beautiful <laughs> splendor and his glory right he we will look at him face, face to, face, to face, face and we can spend that time with him and yeah. boy do i long yeah for that day Day, for that day, day, day to happen. Day. I know that you guys are longing for that, and day. I know that our viewers are longing for that, and it is our prayer that you guys may continue to long for that, to be, continue to live uh, a life of faith, a life of obedience in Christ, uh, and that one day, very, very, very soon, we can be with him and Amen. spend time with him Amen. on the new Jerusalem. Um, Elder Amen. Virgilio, can you close us in prayer? Sure. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the Sabbath day that you have provided, dear Lord, for a day to come to your presence, dear Lord, in this church, to be with you. And as the lesson sing, we are longing for you, longing for you every day. But we have to be acceptable to you, dear Lord. We have to come to you. Your hand is provided to us. And as you made the promise to Abraham, he will be, you will be there for us regardless of the challenges that we have regardless of the things that are happening in in our life dear lord but you made the promise dear lord and you made the beautiful promise that you will come in the new heaven dear lord and we will meet you there so we will have no more pain no more sorrow but be in love with you on a daily basis we long for this daily we ask you for forgiveness of sin in the name of jesus Amen. Amen. Amen.
the sunlight the poetry and laughter hostile in the desert but somehow I'm not alone At this time, we'd like to call up on the praise team once again to offer a closing song. For those who are able, can you please rise as we sing hymn number 214.
please join us as we close in prayer. Our dear, gracious, and heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this Sabbath school lesson and what you've taught us. Please help us to put it in our dearly lives. And Father, I pray that as we go through the rest of the service, that your Holy Spirit will be with each and every one of us, that our minds and our hearts will be focused on you. Thank you for being, thank you for letting everybody to come here today safely. And please be with people who are gonna come in your name, I pray, amen. You may be seated. There's a couple of announcements I would like to announce um, before... Before we actually get to the announcements, there is a first reading transfer. I'd like everybody to uh, just uh, pay attention to the names. Uh, in the bulletin, of course, there is four names, but uh, the fourth one, I think um, we, there must have been a typo or there's some, some things that need to go on before we announce this. So just, uh, just the first three names, and it's uh, Nikinji Williams from Lake Nelson SDA Church in Piscataway to Mount Pisgah SDA Church in Ken Kennesaw, or Kennesaw, Georgia. And also for Selwyn Spence from Lake Nelson SDA Church, Piscataway, New Jersey, to Mount Pisgah in the same city of uh, Kennesaw, Georgia. And also Be uh, Beverly Spence from our church, Lake Nelson SDA, Piscataway, New Jersey, to Mount Pisgah in Kennesaw, Georgia. So those are the first readings for our transfer out um, in this moment. So now let's um, we'll go into the uh, announcements. So as um, for those who um, look at the bulletin, we have some service hours. Obviously, here on Saturday we are in, in presence, but for those. Uh, who would like to also join us virtually, we do have a virtual service in Wednesdays and Fridays, 7 p.m. All our Zoom meeting invites are in lakenelsonschurch.org Zoom. It's a quick link. You don't have to put in any, any uh, ID or password. Just click, click on it, and then you automatically join the meeting. So um, those are our Zoom meetings. And also, we also have our Zoom uh, meetings for 15 minutes of prayer every uh, Monday to Friday from 6.45 to 7 a.m. It's really short, and if you are available, because I know sometimes those are in commuting or going to work, but if you are available, uh, I welcome you to join also. Those meeting invites us also in the website. Um, Lake Nelson Church in the whole district, uh, New Brunswick and Hungarian International, I would like to uh, tell, uh, or at least um, uh, notify that we are, are going through a Romans Bible study. Now, this is going to happen uh, by Pastor Chris, uh, uh, provided this announcement. Every Tuesday, except the second month of, of the second Tuesday of the month at 7.30. And the, those who have subscribed got, got the direct link. I have not posted yet the quick links into the Zoom page, but once um, in the afternoon, once I'm available to edit, I'll make sure that those quick links are available there as well. Um, our sister Vadney, uh, I'm not sure she's here. Uh, um, yes, yeah, this is Vadney. So we have a uh, diabetes program in this afternoon around uh, 3.30, right? 3.30 to 5 p.m., uh, it's going to be, uh, do you have type 2 diabetes? Uh, are you pre-diabetic? So if you are, uh, we, welcome to, uh, we welcome you to come to this afternoon because we're going to be introducing the Diabetes Undone program. And those who are interested as well, uh, we're going to also have some type of registration as well. So we welcome you to this afternoon for this uh, program from the health ministry. Lake Nelson also has a reading club. Um, they meet 2 p.m. right here in the sanctuary, and the Lake Nelson Reading Club are, is reading the Adventist home at the moment, uh, led by uh, Elder Matan. So, um, 
Lake Nelson also is a very, um, is, a, is a warm place where we can all be united together as well, not only in the church, but also afterwards. So we're all uh, inviting you to have a um, after lunch, uh, fellowship lunch after the service. And for those who want to contribute in the future, or uh, you can contact Sister Carol Kelly at carolkelly45 at gmail.com. So we have a uh, potluck after this. Lake Nelson Pathfinders, um, we all know that um, the leaders, uh, William Awanto, if you have any questions, you can always contact uh, the director, at Pathfinder director at lakenelsonchurch.org. And this, here is the, um, he's going to show late, later on, but uh, uh, we have the slides. I'm going to wait for this part towards the end of the day. The, uh, I mean, towards the end of the announcements. Lake Nelson also has the Adventure Club, so if you're interested as well or have any, any information, I, I bel I'm not sure if registration is closed yet, but if it is, then um, uh, I guess it will be next year. But if you're still interested in something or helping the club, you can always reach out to Director Liza Lopez, Adventure Director at LakeNelsonChurch.org, or the Assistant Director at Adventure uh, Deputy Director at LakeNelsonChurch.org. Now, uh, I know we had the, um, the children's, uh, um, uh, what's it called, the theme for uh, 2024. Last time the announcements were saying the February one, but now I updated to make sure it says the March one. And the March theme is uh, God's promises to rescue you. So we will hear those, those stories in the children's um, story um, coming soon. We also want to remind the church about the uh, Sabbath offering, uh, 13th Sabbath offering, March 30 to 2024. And the purpose of the 13th Sabbath offering is to give Adventist churches, which we are one, the opportunity to focus their attention and offerings on the world mission. If you have your Sabbath school lesson, on the back of your Sabbath school lesson, you'll see many projects that the church is, wants to do in the... Um, the division or the area that has been assigned for this uh, Sabbath offerings. Um, you, can, you can see the various projects. And then after you, after, when we give, when we give to these projects, later on these projects come various stories, which we'll later hear in uh, the missionary stories. And three or four years from now, we'll probably hear some great testimonies of how our money or how the offerings uh, have helped them not only with their projects, but also reach out to others who did not know about the Lord. So we uh, we are we encourage you to be to be ready. Um, you always you can always give ahead if you want. Um, when we have the online given, you, there is a section there for uh, uh, 13 Sabbath offering. Um, but if um, you want to bring it physically, we are going to be collecting also in the 13 Sabbath offering as well. Uh, the Lake Nelson uh, Youth Department, uh, the Zone Piscataway, is hosting a youth rally the March 23rd um, to conclude the Youth Week of Prayer. So if you'd like to, uh, they would like to invite you to join uh, as they come to uplift the Creator through songs, through His spoken word, and through prayers. So if you have more, more um, information, if you want more information, you can reach out to the um, the. Uh, Youth Ministry Department. Like I mentioned before, tithes and offerings, uh, Lake Nelson members are, are requested to uh, be a testimony or a testament of God for his faithfulness in returning his tithes and offering. You can easily give at uh, Lake Nelson Church at or given, or you can put it in, the, in, in, I'm not sure if we still have the box enough, but you can also bring in your envelopes and you can give as well. And if you have any questions about any tithes and offerings or one you want to give or you want to know anything, information about what has been done before, you can always reach out to uh, Elder Virgilio uh, Osorio or you can email at treasurer at lakenosinchurch.org. So, and if you, for some reason, missed anything that I said or would like to be updated before this comes up, you can always subscribe to our email. And we have been blessed because uh, we have gotten a lot of subscriptions and I believe Brother John is one of them. Brother Brother John? And, yes, no? You subscribe to one of them? Because okay, I did see somebody named by, by the name of John there, so it must have been, because uh, I do get all the subscriptions um, when you put in your email, and then, we, so you don't get spam because anybody can put your email address, right? 
So when you, when you put your email address, you get a verification. So you get a response saying, uh, do you really want to subscribe to your email? And then after you, do, you say yes, then you get started the announcement. So it isn't just putting your email address and a name. You have to also reply, yes, I want to, after you get an email verification. Uh, we do this so that um, uh, to avoid you know, someone using your email address when you don't want to join. So you can always unsubscribe if, if you feel like you're not interested. Uh, there's also an unsubscription, but um, you, can, or you can also view the bulletin just by going into the QR code or just visiting the website as well. So we welcome you to um, subscribe. There's a, a, a uh, link, no, there's a, uh, the conference is, is uh, hosting a retire happy seminar. Uh, how to retire properly. Um, I'm not at the age yet, but you know, for those who are going to, actually, actually, you know what? I may not be that age, but I think it's always good to learn, right? Because you want to avoid many mistakes now uh, or many, many things that you might have missed and then not have enough time to actually correct that. So there's a retire seminar, a retirement seminar. So it's going to be the March 16th at 20, uh, no, March 26th, right? So if um, you're interested, uh, you can, there's the, a, uh, the contact information also on the um, um, digital bulletin, and if you want, you can reach out to me, get more information, but it's in the conference website as well. So those are news from the conference, and as uh, you know, in the bulletin, we also have the uh, prayer requests. Um, don't forget about them, brothers and sisters. Um, we, we know that we have prayer request for health, and prayer request also for, for faith. Um, because those are the things that uh, uh, keeps us united when we pray for one another. So at this moment uh, now, I would like to invite um, uh, um, a brother, um, William. He's going to show the, if we can put it back to the... Uh, Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Okay, let me actually go back. So thank you, Elder Juan, for uh, giving a little insight of what had happened. For those of us who were not aware, last week, last month, we also had for, uh, some of the Pathfinders participate in a conference-wide event, which is the PBE. Uh, for those of us who know what that is, it's essentially uh, Pathfinders would study the word of God, and they would compete against other Pathfinder clubs, but really the bottom essence is for them to understand and to get closer to God through his spoken word. And by God's grace, back in February, uh, our club, the Piscataway Eagles, had participated in the conference-wide event. The conference event had over 57 teams participate, but only four teams went forward to the union level. And out of the four teams, two of them were from our church. Amen. So praise God for that. Another statistics, too, last week, for those of us who were not able to see any of the Pathfinders, we went over to the union level. And now over the union level, out of 37 who participated, those two Lake Nelson team also moved forward to the division level. Can I get an amen? So here are little snapshots of what had happened. Uh, all of our happy Pathfinders who visited and participated. Um, and not only are they going to be representing our conference, but our Lake Nelson Club will also be representing our union in Colorado. So we definitely encourage um, prayers. We are looking for prayer requests as the kids continue to study God's word. For those of us who are not familiar, they are studying the book of Joshua. All right, am I right? And Judges. Okay, thank you. I had to study more too. But um, the event will be next month. Uh, in preparation for next month, we are also doing plenty of fundraising. It's going to come with a cost, so we like to encourage all the parents and everyone here in the church to help support us. Uh, one way to support us, we're gonna, it's not in the announcements, but we will be having an event later tonight. We're going to be out in the fireside for those of us who want to experience a movie night social. We'll also be having a bonfire outside. So for those, and we're also going to be selling food. The proceeds to our fundraisers will be going to the PBE in support for next month. So for those who are able to make it, 
gladly encourage um, for you to join us. It's going to be starting at 7 p.m. Thank you. What a blessing, right, to hear that. Um, now, as we go into our um, second part of, the, of our service, we, uh, I welcome the uh, praise and worship team. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. The first song we're going to sing is going to be How He Loves. Please sing along with us.
Uh, the next song we're gonna sing is Holy Forever.
can, now, we'll, now we'll be having our call to worship. Please stand. Heavenly Father, thank you. Once again, we are gathered here in your name to worship you, Lord God. Father, we thank you that through everything that has happened this week, we can be gathered here, that we can be in your presence, Lord. And Father, right now we ask as we begin our time of worship, as we delve into the word this morning and afternoon, God, we ask for your spirit to move in a very special way. We thank you, God, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let us uh, open our hymns to hymn number 100, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Check and check in. Yes, okay. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our church. Um, once again, uh, my name is Juan Vargas, for those who do not know me. I mean, who do not know me. And um, I would like to say you have chosen the, the, uh, uh, the correct place to be, because here you're going to be encountered with the Lord, right? Uh, it's after our very busy schedule during the week. Maybe some of them had light schedules, but uh, I know I had a busy one. Uh, we're glad that we have a Sabbath because we can rest and be worshiping our Creator. So we um, like to also see who is visiting us for the first time or maybe second time. If we have any visitors in the... Um, I know when I used to come to church for the first time, I didn't want to be, uh, I guess, call out or want to, because I was a little shy, um, so I, I didn't want to know, like, I was visiting a church. I just wanted to just go in there and, and not, no one know that I'm visiting. But, um, but then there's others who say, they come to church and say, I don't get acknowledged. So you have two different types of, uh, uh, of views, right? So if you feel, uh, if, if you don't want to say you're visiting for the first time, that's fine. But if you want to know, if, if you want to see who is uh, visiting us for the first time, you can Wave your hand, or um, there we go. We have two in the back. Thank you. Where are you coming from, brothers and sisters? Free Hall. Oh, okay, New Jersey, right? So welcome, welcome. Um, I remember Elder Martin was reminding me that we also have uh, at the at the end. Uh, you can for those who are visiting us, we do have a, a gift for you guys. So um, just remember to ask the deaconess uh, at the end, and they will give you a, a gift. Um, we're, we're glad that you've joined us. And also, I know we have visitors watching uh, online. Uh, we also are not only uh, here in presence, but we also have a virtual uh, presence as well online. So we welcome, the, we welcome you, and we're glad you have chosen uh, this moment to be with us um, with our brothers and sisters. So today is the Sabbath, as we know. But also today is what's called in the international, um, in, in the church has a youth, global youth day. And it is happening throughout the whole world. <laughs> so in, an, in a special program uh, which the youth is going to run and, and also events that they do. And I, I, I kind of feel young again. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad that I'm participating in this Global Youth Day. Um, my wife always makes, uh, you know, like, you know, you're, you're not a young adult anymore. And, I, and it's true, I'm not. Uh, I may look young, but I'm not a young adult. <laughs> Uh, I'm 41 years old, but I feel young, right? So I look young. So I'm glad that I'm participating as well in this, uh, in this program. So today, not only I'm participating, but we have uh, um, those who, uh, participants from the scripture reading. We have, um, um, I don't want to mistake the name, Kayla Esquivel. So thank you, Kayla, for uh, doing the scripture reading. And also we're going to have... Uh, also for Titan Offering, Rylan Magispoke, and also for the Garden of Prayer, Alexa Martinez. So we are glad that the youth is participating uh, in this day. So at this moment, we're now uh, I'm going to call for uh, Kayla to do the scripture reading. Um, happy Sabbath, church. The scripture for today is Matthew 6, verse 33 to 34, and Matthew 7, verse 1 and 2. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Happy Sabbath, church family. Today's tithe and offerings reading was written by Heather Thompson Day. The beach is one of my favorite places. My family lives close to the beach, and it is a wonderful place to come to, especially when the weather is warm. My husband and I have taken many walks along the water and prayed for God to guide the next steps of our lives. Looking at the water, 
we can all be reminded of God's sovereignty. That's a big theological word that simply means that God reigns above everything. God is in control. When the, when the disciples in the book of Mark were caught in a storm, they cried out to Jesus for his help. Jesus was fast asleep, but they woke him up and he calmed the storm that threatened their lives. Their response was, they said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Mark 4, 41. Today, we can rest in knowing that our God is able to calm all of the storms in our lives. Even deeper than that, God is able to give us a sense of peace even when the world around us feels like it is in chaos. We are blessed to be able to gather as believers and encourage each other with our testimonies of how God has carried us through the storms of our lives. As we return to our tithe and offering today, let our hearts give from a place of gratitude for our storm-calming God. The deacons may now collect the tithe and offerings. Now let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for all the blessings and the resources you provide. We turn these tithes and offerings to you. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, I do like to uh, make this, this announcement. Um, as a church, I know we're collecting our tithes and offering, but um, we, we haven't been meeting our budget, brothers and sisters. And actually, we are barely reaching 10000 too. Our budget is 15000 right? So I just, uh, it's just a reminder, you know, um, that um, to, I guess, we all, have, we all have necessities as well in life, but let us remind ourselves to, to not lose um, our our desire to give, and, and God will always reward us when we are great givers. So 
if um, if for next week we um, we can we can meet, or I mean next month we can meet, then we will um, we will be an, uh, announcing that. But uh, it's just an announcement at this, at this moment. So um, we'd like to thank again once again um, Ryan for his uh, Titan offering stories and. Maybe one of these days we will hear a, a story coming out of Lake Nelson, right? And, and it will be a blessing. And so we can always hear those wonderful stories and wonderful uh, testimonies. So um, at this moment, I would like to now invite um, Gregory Martinez, who's going to be doing the children's story. All the children may uh, pick up their baskets and come, and come to the front for Gregory Martinez for the story. Happy Sabbath, kids. Oh my gosh, did some of us not wake up yet? Are we still sleeping? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. All right, how many of us know what the theme for this month is, for the children's stories? Can anyone guess? Anyone remember? You know? What is it? Do you know? Faith in God. Faith in God, that's a good one, but not this month. Do you know? Jesus making friends, that's also a good one. Maybe we'll use that later. This month is God Rescues Us. Okay, can you repeat that? All right. And today's story is about a time that I got rescued. It was really scary. So when I was young, probably about your age, maybe 9, 10, around there, my town, where I live, they had a carnival event. And so one Sunday, my mom woke me up really early. I was a little mad about that. But she woke me up really early, and we went to the carnival that was hosting. And there was so much to do. There were games, there were activities, there were prizes, there was food, there was so much stuff to do. And I was just so excited. I was just so excited. But before we started, my mom gave me one rule. No cotton candy. No cotton candy. And there was just there was so much. So much food, so many snacks that I could enjoy from. But she, and she only limited me one thing. She said, no cotton candy. It's not good for you. Now listen, kids. Up until this point in life, I had never had cotton candy. I had never had cotton candy. But my mom said, no cotton candy. So you know what I did? 
Mom, I want cotton candy. Mom, you want cotton candy. I wanted cotton candy. And I begged and I begged and I begged the entire day. And finally, she said, okay, you can have cotton candy. So I was like, yes, finally. So for the, yes, I was excited. For the first time ever, I was going to have some cotton candy. And we went and we bought some and I ate and blah, 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 blah. And it was, it was amazing for like two seconds. But then I started feeling something. Oh, my stomach hurts. Oh, my stomach hurts. And it hurt, it hurt, it hurt. And I started throwing up. And my mom, she had to help me. But I was really sick. That cotton candy, it was not good for me. And so I went home, but thankfully my mom, she made me some tea, she helped me get better, and since that day, I think I've eaten eating cotton candy maybe like one or two times since. It was not, not something I'd like to repeat. And my experience with cotton candy is a lot of times like our experience with sin. You know, maybe we don't even want to do it, but as soon as someone says, no, you can't do that, then, oh man, I really want to do that. That's the only thing I want to do. And God is sort of like our parents in this way, you know? It's not that he's going to stop us from doing this. No, we have free will. We have choices. My mom could have said the entire time, no, you're not going to have cotton candy. But instead, she let me experience it. She let me see that it was bad for myself. And then at the end, she took care of me because that's what God does. God's not going to rescue us from the consequences of sin. No, we need those in order to learn for ourselves and in order for there to be justice. But he's going to rescue us at the end when we realize that it is bad for us. And so I want you to take that from today. That God's not going to let you do whatever you want. God's not going to let you do whatever you want and have you get off scot-free. No, but he will rescue you when you really need it. When you do believe in him, when you ask for his help. Can I get an amen? All right, who wants to pray? You want to pray? Okay, I'll take you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Please bless us and bless and bless your church and bless and bless to all the people in your church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Oh, you can go back to your parents now. And now invite the uh, praise and worship team as a call to prayer him, um, 671.
us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come together today to thank you. We thank you for giving us another day of life where we are happy and hopefully and in good health. And we thank you that we were all able to come together today to praise your name and adore you. We thank you for everything that you have done for us and everything we, you will do for us, Lord. And we ask you to help those in need, whether they have financial needs, emotional needs, or physical needs. We pray that you will be there for them and that you will guide those who are, who are lost and bless them, as well as bless those who weren't able to be here today. O oh Lord, we also ask for your traveling mercies and that you may bless the preacher today. May his words be not his, but yours, and may we all learn something from your message today and invoke them in our lives. Dear Jesus, we pray that we may always follow you and listen to your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Alexa, and also thank you, Gregory, for the children's story. Uh, this moment, um, we would like to invite Sister Sabrina Houston, who will have a special music for us. May we be blessed by uh, the praise and worship from Sister Sabrina. One. In uh, Romans 5, verse 8, it says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And in Matthew 27, 29, it says, and after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt down before him and mocked him saying, hail King of the Jews. And that was the day that he wore my crown, our crown.
Amen. That is a great, great team. We are now going to have a, the, um, the team. And today we have our Pastor Chris Mindanao with us. And his title of his sermon is Christ, Culture, and Personal Convictions. Pastor Chris, I invite you and um, may we have our hearts open to hear the word of God. Amen. Happy Sabbath. I am happy to see a pretty full house today here at Lake Nelson. And um, yes, before we begin, let us pray. Let us uh, give ourselves to God that he may speak to us. Heavenly Father, thank you. Once again, we come before you because we want to hear from you. We want to know you. We want to know who we are in you. And Lord, we ask again for your spirit to move in a very special way uh, this afternoon. And may you speak to our hearts, God. And may you teach us uh, and let us in on things that we did not know. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How many of you saw the, uh, the banner outside in the lobby, uh, in, in, the, in the foyer? It says, unwavering commitment. And as you guys know, this was uh, selected as the theme for uh, the year for Lake Nelson Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen? 
And not only are we talking about our commitment to God, but we know that our commitment to God ultimately stems from his commitment to us. And we see that through the picture of Jesus on the cross. Over the past uh, three months, we're actually coming to the conclusion. At the end of March, we are concluding our sermon series titled Kingdom Manifesto. And this has been a sermon series that we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount uh, through Matthew 5 through 7. And how many of you guys have been blessed by this sermon series? Just going through the text, just verse by verse, just talking about uh, the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And this, um, this afternoon, I have the privilege of sharing a message uh, titled, Christ, Culture, and Personal Convictions. Can you guys say that with me? Christ, Culture, and Personal Convictions. This is going to be a, a, a spicy message and we're going to talk about some, some potentially uh, controversial things, but we want to look at the Word and see what Jesus wants us to know um, from Matthew 6, verses 25 to 34, and also chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. For those of you guys who were here two weeks ago, you know that I preached on the, the story of the rich young ruler. Were you guys here when I preached on that? And what was the takeaway, do you guys think? The takeaway, essentially, is, is the same as what we're seeing here. When you put God first, he will provide. Amen? When you put God first, he will provide. And that is what Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Put him first in your life. And all of these things, and he talks about clothes, he talks about food, he talks about everything that you need will be added to you. Amen? Amen. Um, This is a prayer in the book of Proverbs that I want us to to meditate on um, as we kind of summarize this first part of the text that we kind of addressed already two weeks ago. But Solomon writes in Proverbs 30, verse 8 and 9, he says, Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. So essentially this prayer is saying, God, don't make me rich and don't make me poor. Don't make me rich to the point where I'll forget about you and don't make me poor to the point where I feel like I need to rob somebody. Give me what I need and I will be content with that. Amen? So, so this is the summary of, um, of Matthew uh, 6, 25 to 34. And I, again, this is a similar text adding on to what we spoke about um, two weeks ago. So I'm, I'm going to take the liberty to focus on Matthew 7, verses 1 to 5 this afternoon, because this is a, a text that I think requires a, a full message for us this afternoon. So I'm going to put some images on the screen, and I want you guys to, to talk to me. I want, this, I want there to be feedback. I want us to talk a little bit. So this is image number one. Just look at it. Take note in your mind of what you're seeing. Anyone have any, any observations? You can just shout out. What are you seeing in this image? Culture. Okay. Say it again. Okay. Different costumes, or we could see it as a costume, but they're, they're normal dress, right? They're what they wear. Someone else have something? Tradition, okay. So we see in these images, we see individuals wearing their, their culture's uh, attire, right? And for us, where we are in the world right now, we look at this and we say, oh, that's, you know, that's cool, that's interesting. But it looks foreign to us. I want us to go to image number two. Just take it in. Let's reflect on it. What are you guys seeing here? 
Huh? CEOs, okay. Anybody see elders in there? Church leaders? Church administration? Church members? Okay, some people say politicians. Huh? Diplomats, okay. So I want to I wanna ask a question based on these two images. And I, I want you to really ask this in your heart for yourself to, to really gauge. Do people need to transition from image number one to image number two to be considered a follower of Christ? Let's go back. This is image number one. You have Africa, Mexico, Scotland, China, Vietnam, the Middle East, different nations represented. This is image number two. A pretty diverse group ethnically, right? You have different skin colors. You have some Hispanic, some white, some black in this picture. Again, I ask the question, do people need to transition from image number one to image number two to be considered a follower of Christ? I'm hearing no. Okay. Let's let's talk about this. I want us to go to the book of Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15 and verse 1. And this is one of the most important chapters in the New Testament. And I encourage you to study this on your own when you go home. Go deep into the text. Use a commentary. Go, go look at what it is that's being done and what's being said in Acts chapter 15. So this is the chapter known as the, the chapter of the Jerusalem Council. And I'm, I'm going to start in verse 1. I encourage you to go into your Bible. I encourage you to uh, go on your smartphone and follow along for yourself so that you yourself can also see what's being said in the text. Verse 1 But some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers. This is already established churches at this point in the book of Acts. Some people came from Judea, so you could assume that they were Jewish Christians or just Jewish, who came and who taught the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be what? Saved. So these people coming from Judea, right? And, and those of us who are familiar with the Old Testament know that the Jewish Israelite culture is a very strong culture. And these people who have followed this tradition for their entire life, for, the, for their entire history, have known circumcision to be a sign that you are part of the chosen people of God. So now, in the book of Acts, you see that the Holy Spirit begins to work in other places outside of Israel. The, the gospel begins to spread. The Holy Spirit is poured out on people that have never even heard of Judaism, have never even heard of circumcision before. And these people come, they go out of their way to travel to a foreign country to say, listen, you know, what Paul and all them are preaching is cool, but what you need to do in order to be saved is you need to be circumcised. So, so Paul and Barnabas, they're, you can read the story on your own, the entire story in context, but Paul and Barnabas are debating with these guys. Eventually, this becomes such a big issue that they go back to Jerusalem, where the, the, the core leadership of the early church is found, and they're talking about this. There's much debate, according to verse 7, and Peter stands up and says, Brothers, You know that in the early days God made a choice among you that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. He continues, verse 8, And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by what? By faith. Now therefore... Why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? Wow. So they're, they're discussing, these church leaders are discussing, Peter gets up filled with the Holy Spirit and says, listen guys, God has already showed, shown us that he has accepted the Gentiles. 
They're not following our customs. They're not following every little thing that we as Jewish Christians follow. But God has clearly demonstrated that the Holy Spirit is among them and in them. So why are we putting God to the test by placing a yoke, by placing a burden on the neck of these disciples that not even we ourselves keep perfectly? This is a big question. But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus just as they will. That's how Peter completes his, his speech. Now, after this, um, we see James, who is the brother of Jesus. He is the, the sitting at the, as the chairman of the council of Jerusalem. And this is his judgment. He says, Therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, and from what has been strangled, and from blood. So, what he says is, listen, we're not going to put anything else on them except what Jesus has taught. We're going we're gonna to keep it pure, what it is that we are transmitting to them. But in order for them to coexist with Jewish Christians, we are going to give them these, these three or four um, uh, principles that are also you know, stemming from Jesus' teachings in order for them to coexist, to worship together, and to share a space together. Yes? So this is, this is what the early church, spirit-filled, decided to do when it came to evangelism, when it came to mission, when it came to converting people, when it came to sharing the good news of the gospel. They said, we are not going to lay any other burdens or yokes on the necks of these people except the bare minimum of what is necessary. So again, I come back to these images. Again, take a look at image number one. Image number two. And my question again is, do people need to transition from image number one to image number two to be considered a follower of Christ? Put in another way. Do people need to go from wearing this to wearing this in church in order to not receive a dirty look? That hits a little closer to home. I want to I wanna break down um, a little bit of, of history, and I want to share about what the term colonization means. How many of you guys have heard that term before? Okay, colonization, the act of one country subjugating another, leading to political, social, and economic change, often while forcing its own language and cultural values upon its people. This is, if you look at the history books, this has happened with many countries in Western Europe. This is Spain. This is... Uh, uh, Great Britain, this is France, these are many of the powers in Western Europe that have colonized many countries throughout the world. What I'm wearing right now is called a baron. This is the most formal garment that you can wear in the Philippines. This is, this is the top of the line. This is what politicians wear, this is what, uh, what uh, clergy wears, this is what pastors wear, this is it. But what happens is, as time goes on and colonization spreads, we have, uh, and this is something I learned just this past week, the reason why the Philippines is called the Philippines is because King Philip from Spain colonized the Philippines and named it after himself. And not only did he name it after himself, but all of the cultural customs unique to the Philippines, were replaced with the cultural customs of Western Europe. So now in place of wearing something like this, they began to wear ties, they began to wear suits, they began to wear button-down shirts, not because they wanted to, but because they had to. Yes? So I want to now tie this into Christianity. And this is from a book called Encountering the History of Missions by John Terry and Robert Gallagher. These are two Christian historians. And they said, missionaries failed to distinguish between Christianity and what? Western culture. 
Missionaries carried lots of cultural baggage with them, and they tried to make the national believers into proper Westerners, introducing Western dress, political forms, and social customs. I just want to highlight a couple of Western European cultural customs that have a large influence in Christian culture today. Number one, expectation of men to wear suits and neckties. Yes, this is one that I just talked about. Number two, expectation of women to wear dresses and high heels. This has not always been the custom. This is something that comes from Western European influence through colonization of different nations throughout history. The third one, the view of hymnal music as the only acceptable music in a worship setting. This comes from Western Europe. I don't know if you guys know, but the hymnal in the pew, these are European, this is a European genre of music. And what has been communicated as, as uh, the gospel has spread throughout the world is that this is holy music. Yes, it is holy music because of the words and the contents of what is being said, but we have been conditioned to believe that if it does not sound like music from the hymnal, then it's unholy. Because holiness has been uh, tied so closely to Western European culture. And the reason why many of us have these customs is because Western European colonizers came to our home country. I praise God that we have such a, a, divi a diverse church here, right? We have people from Jamaica. We have people from Colombia. We have people from uh, Puerto Rico, from, from Africa, from so many countries. And many of these cultural customs that we have were introduced when colonizers or so-called Christian missionaries came and said, listen, this is who Jesus is, and this is also how you're required to dress. This is how you're required to, to, to worship. This is how you're required to, to behave in order to be accepted by God. But for many of these um, missionaries or colonizers, they created God in the image of their own Western culture. So these are, these are not things found in Scripture, my brothers and sisters. If you look at these points, you don't find this in the Bible. I'm not saying these are bad things. But I'm saying when we begin to act and impose things like these as if they were coming straight from the mouth of God himself, my brothers and sisters, we are on dangerous ground. Because we begin to impose culture onto people as if it was, as if it's something that in heaven, everybody's going to be dressed in Western European garments. My brothers and sisters, that's not true. That's not true. And again, I am not bringing these things up to demonize or to cast a negative light on wearing suits and ties. I wear suits and ties. I enjoy suits and ties and, and you know, everything else that comes with it. I enjoy hymns. I enjoy all these things. But it becomes an issue when we are unable to discern what is Jesus, uh, what is, what is the, the kingdom of heaven, what is from scripture, and what is from culture. And there has to be distinguished, my brothers and sisters, because many people have walked out of the church because this is not a culture that they belong to. This is not a culture that they fit into. And now there is a wall that they need to scale in order to fit in to the culture that is not actually grounded in Scripture itself. Many times our evangelism focuses more on forcing people to conform to our temporal culture than it does on teaching people to live according to Jesus' timeless principles. What is our evangelism? What is the focus of our evangelism? Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus and his principles, my brothers and sisters, can be just as clearly seen in both of these people, both of these groups of people. The character of Christ 
is something seen in the character, not necessarily seen in the outward deportment. Yes, I am a, a firm believer in modesty and humility in, in these principles that guide us in decision making. But yes, Jesus says, Matthew 7, verse 1 to 2, Judge not that you not be judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The Greek word for judge in this text is krino. And the word krino can be used differently in different contexts. Uh, for some, it's, it's used as discern, to be able to discern right from wrong, to try or to test, but also the word can be used as the word condemn. And I believe in this context, it's not saying don't discern. We should be discerning Christians, amen? It's not saying uh, don't test the spirits because we know we need to test the spirits. So I believe what Jesus is saying here is do not condemn that you may not be condemned. And this is not something I myself am saying, but this is also something that Ellen White herself says in Review and Herald, November 30th, 1886. She says, while you condemn others, the Lord condemns you. May the Lord move upon the hearts of the individual members of the church until his transforming grace shall be revealed in life and character. Then, when you assemble together, it will not be to what? Criticize one another, but to talk of Jesus and his love. Amen. This is why we're here. We are gathered in this place, not for us, not for ourselves, not for the people sitting next to us, behind us, in front of us. We're here for Jesus. We're here for Jesus. And when we are able to, to put this principle into effect in our own lives, that's why we'll come here. That's why we're going to be here. To talk about Jesus and his love. 1 Samuel 16, 7, The Lord does not see as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Romans 14, verse 2 and 3. We're winding down here. Romans 14 and Acts 15 are two chapters. When you get home, I ask that you would just study them in depth. Read, 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 read it again. Because these chapters teach us how to live in harmony together as believers in Christ. Amen? One person believes he may eat anything. This is Paul writing. While the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. For God has what? Welcomed him. Welcomed them. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we... We, we, we have this aura because we believe we're doing everything right, and we believe we're doing things right that we should be doing. We begin to project expectations on people, and there begins to develop a, a spirit of condemnation, which in Revelation is, is the spirit of the accuser who accuses the people of God day and night, according to Revelation 12. But Paul is saying, listen, my brothers and sisters, different people have different convictions. Different people are at different places in their faith journey. Different people have different cultures. Different people have different upbringings and, and ways that they grew up and places where they lived for many years of their life, many churches that they've attended when they were growing up. Many people in, in this room right now may stand on opposite sides of, a, of an argument, of a certain issue. And that's okay. But Paul teaches us in Romans 14, listen, if someone over there is doing something that you personally won't do, don't despise them. Love them. If someone on the other side is, is, is not doing something that you believe is okay, it's all right. Don't pass judgment on them. Love them. 
Everyone is on their journey. And we do not need to make people in our own image. When we share the gospel, when we come to church, we do not need to make other people or the church itself or the church service in our own image, according to our preferences, according to our opinions. My brothers and sisters, to be honest, we are not here for ourselves. We're here for the community. Amen? This space is supposed to be a safe space, a beacon of hope for anyone to come and to know who Jesus is. And if this is your first time hearing about Jesus, just know that he loves you and he is here for you. This is the Jesus that we serve. Do not pass judgment. Do not despise another person. He continues, Romans 14, 4. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? The servant of God. It is before his own master that he stands or falls. And what does Paul say? Paul is a very optimistic man. He says, "And, and he or she will be upheld for the Lord is able to make them stand. Amen? God is able to make them stand. Just a couple of verses as we conclude. Psalm 101.3, whoever slanders, and this is something that I was researching, I was like, man, God takes this very seriously. God says, whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. Have mercy. That's big. That's big. That puts... Gossip and slander at a level that maybe we don't acknowledge as sin. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. Wow. James one twenty six. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Have mercy. Have mercy. We can do all the religious stuff. We can go to church, the happy Sabbath, the everything. But if we are slandering people, if, we're, if, if we constantly have other people and their name on our mouth, my brothers and sisters, you need to question where you are spiritually. James says your religion is worthless. There's, you're, you're, you're in the same category where Jesus says, depart from me for I, I, do, I do not know you at the end. My brothers and sisters, this is the ministry of the enemy himself, the accuser. We're concluding here. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Jesus takes this very serious. As we're concluding, he promises us, he tells us, don't be anxious about your life about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, about what you're going to put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Isn't there something of of much more substance to be thinking about than what the other person is wearing or eating or drinking? There's another text. I didn't include it here, but Paul himself says the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking and all of these things. The spirit of God, or the, the, um, the... The Christian life, the walk with God is about being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what the kingdom of God is about. Concluding here, my brothers and sisters, this is such good news. When I read this text, I'm encouraged. Revelation 7, 9, this is a picture of the people of God in the last days. I want you to really hear this. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number. Hallelujah. From every nation, from all tribes, 
and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. There are going to be people from every culture, from every background. He says, from all tribes. This means even remote tribes up in the mountains where they're just completely naked. Standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes representing the righteousness of Christ. Amen? Representing the favor of God, representing the gift of salvation that God gives us through His sacrifice. So at this time, I want to conclude with a word of prayer. And if I could just ask if someone could just play in the background, just for us to have a moment of of meditation on our own. And I want to invite you to just pray. I want you to, to personally, on your own, just pray. However that looks for you. And just say, God... What is it in my life? What is it in my heart, in my mind? What are the the expectations and the judgments that I am placing on other people? And Lord, remind me of the times that I have fallen short. Lord, in this moment, I pray over your church, your bride. I pray, Father, that your spirit would move among all of us, Lord. Speak to us, Lord God. Show us who you are. Show us what you value. Show us in its purest form, what is your kingdom about? Lord God, give us discernment to know what is culture and what is Christ. And Lord, help us to acknowledge humbly that each of us have our own convictions. And somehow, some way, in the midst of all these convictions, Lord, you are calling us to live as one body under you. Teach us to live in harmony, Lord. Teach us to to make space, to create room for each other in our differences. Yes, Lord, sin is something that we take serious and that we do not want to allow within the body. But Lord, help us to discern what is a spiritual sin in your eyes and what is a cultural sin in our own eyes. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, for your grace, for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to encourage you um, in front of your seat, there should be a connect card, if I'm not mistaken. Can you guys just confirm for me if there's a connect card in front of you? Yes? I want to encourage you to fill one of those out, to um, request prayer. If you have any prayer requests, we have people who are designated to pray for you. If you desire to receive more Bible studies, if you receive, if, if you want to talk to a leader, if you desire to be baptized, please fill out one of those connect cards. And we will collect them at the door um, on your way out. So please fill those out because we want to serve you here as the pastoral team here at Lake Nelson. So thank you and God bless. As we sing our closing hymn, hymn 99, God will take care of you.
Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your word. And Lord, we are grateful that in Revelation 7, 9, it says that there will be a multitude that no one can count. Standing before your throne, consisting of all nations, all tribes, all tongues, all languages, and all people. And we are grateful, God, for the blessing that we have of diversity within the body of Christ. And Lord, as you lead us forward, teach us, Lord, how to love each other, to extend grace to each other, to suspend our judgment towards each other, and to pray for each other just as you prayed for those who crucified you. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness, for your love, and we pray as well for the food that you have provided for us in the fellowship hall. Lord God, we thank you because we have a space where we can not only get into the, the word, the bread of life, but we can also break bread together. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, what a wonderful blessing to know that we have this Sabbath, that we can come together. And the Bible says that from month to month, and uh, from Sabbath to Sabbath, we will together worship in the kingdom of heaven. I want to you to keep on worshiping with us. Remember, as we worship together, this is just a training for heaven. Because in Sabbath, we are going to be worshiping together. I want you not also to be worshiping with us on Sabbath, but I would like every one of us to be part of this ministry of the small groups as well. As we come together and participate, we can participate in the Sabbath school classes. Whenever you come to church, if you come in person, you can be part of our Sabbath school classes, which are the small groups as well. And if you don't even come and you want to do it online as well, please, you could contact your pastor, your personal ministries director, or any one of the leaders of this church, and we'll be more than glad to involve you in the small group ministries, because no matter the distance, no matter what happens, we can still keep on working for Jesus. I want to let you know that um, we love you, we appreciate you, and I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank you for your prayers. I want to thank you for your financial support. We need your financial support constantly. As you know, this church is a church that has a lot of things going on. Ministries with the school, ministries with evangelism, ministries renovating this church, this temple as well. And I know you can be part of it. So just be active. Just keep on following us. Keep on here worshiping with us. And I know the Lord is going to bless you. God bless.